So now we're going to talk about causes of hypothyroidism. There's going to be about four causes that we're, we're going to talk about. The first one is Hashimoto thyroiditis. And Hashimoto thyroiditis arises from its th thyroid damage due to autoimmune antibodies. And these are anti-thyroid peroxidase and anti-thyroglobulin antibodies. And these antibodies go and attack the thyroid. So this is the thyroid gland. And these antibodies go and attack the thyroid and damage the tissue. So you get damaged tissue, you get re uh, decreased release of thyroid hormone, and now you have hypothyroidism. So the way this presents the clinical features here were the hypothyroid symptoms. And do you remember what those were? Remember we had the, the triad of symptoms from decreased metabolic activity. So just cold intolerance, decreased sweating, you have weight gain, you have dry, cool skin, and you have some hair changes, coarse and brittle hair. And then you have symptoms from understimulation of the sympathetic nervous system. So you get constipation, you get decreased activity, you get bradycardia. And then you have a couple other ones. You have the oligomenorrhea, deep, decreased deep tendon reflexes, you have the generalized mixed edema. So that's all the hypothyroid symptoms. You don't have to know them word for word exactly, but you do have to, to be able to recognize that clinical picture because that's how the patient's going to present. And the other key differentiating feature for this one is you get a painless thyroid enlargement. So the inflammation causes enlargement of the thyroid. And for Hashimoto th thyroiditis, it's going to be a painless enlargement. Okay. And this disease has an increased risk of a B-cell non-Hodgkin lymphoma. So for diagnostics, the key things you want to know about is that you will see Hurtle cells on Hashimoto thyroiditis. So Hurtle cells, Hashimoto thyroiditis. These are eosinophilic epithelial cells. So if you see eosinophilic uh, staining, that's Hurtle cells and Hashimoto thyroiditis. The other thing you see is you see a lymphocytic infiltrate with germinal centers. And so remember, this is just from the chronic inflammation, from chronic inflammation from all this damage that is, remember, mediated by this autoimmune antibodies, antithyroid peroxidase and antithyroglobulin antibodies. So that's Hashimoto thyroiditis. Another cause of hypothyroidism is subacute granulon granulomatous thyroiditis, is the dequervin thyroiditis. So this one is an inflammation of the thyroid and it's following a viral infection. So viral infection leads to inflammation of the thyroid, you get thyroid damage, decreased thyroid hormone. And how does this present? This presents a little differently. You get First you get transient hyperthyroid symptoms, transient hyperthyroid, and then you're gonna get hypothyroid. And why, would, why does this happen? Because this inflammation of the thyroid is going to lead, lead to the release of stored thyroid hormone. So whatever was stored in the thyroid is going to be released due to this inflammation. You're going to get these transient hyperthyroid symptoms. So remember the key ones is um, the, they're going to feel hotter than normal. They're going to be sweating. They're going to be uh, they're going to lose weight. They're going to have warm, moist skin. They have diarrhea. They've increased activity. Those are the key key defining features of hyperthyroidism. Um, they're going to have the brisk reflexes. And the way you can differentiate this, because this is also, Hashimoto also presents with thyroid, uh, hypothyroidism. Actually, all of them we're going to um, talk about have hypothyroid symptoms. This one has a painful thyroid. Okay, painful thyroid. Hashimoto is painless. This one, subacute granulomatous thyroiditis, is painful thyroid. And on histology, on diagnostics, what you're going to see is you're going to see granulomatous inflammation. You get macrophages and giant cells. And you already know this from the name, subacute granulomatous thyroiditis. And then, again, this is from inflammation following viral infection. You're going to see increased inflammatory markers. But this is the, this is the key and it's easy to remember because it's in the name. Next one is renal fibrosing, fibrosing thyroiditis. And this is a it's due to chronic inflammation which causes fibrosis of the thyroid gland. So as always, you get inflammation, you get fibrosis. And fibrosis of the thyroid gland means the thyroid gland doesn't work well, means decreased thyroid hormone. And the way this presents is, again, like always, hypothyroid symptoms. But on exam, this one feels hard to touch and painless. And this is the key. It's hard to the touch because it's all this fibrosis in the thyroid. And that fibrosis feels hard to the touch. It's going to it feel like a rock, really. You touch, you examine the neck, and it feels like there's a rock in their neck. That's, and then, then you know that's rhidofibrosing fibrosing thyroiditis. You can tell from the name, rhidofibrosing fibrosing fibrosing thyroiditis. And this fibrosis can extend from the thyroid to the surrounding structures, including the airway. And so this, this can mimic 
anaplastic carcinoma of the thyroid. This is really this is a bad carcinoma of the thyroid. It's poorly differentiated, and this cancer can spread uh, lo spreads locally also to surrounding structures. So now you're going to feel like hardness, you're going to feel a mass in surrounding structures, you're going to be worried about anaplastic carcinoma. But the way you differentiate this from anaplastic carcinoma is that in renal fibrosis and thyroiditis, patients are younger and they don't have any malignant cells. Okay. So the next one is now we're going to switch to children. The, last, the first three were for adults. The then last one is going to be congenital hypothyroidism, and another name for this is cretinism. So it's hypothyroidism in the fetus, and there's multiple etiologies for this. So first one is antibody-mediated mediated maternal hypothyroidism. So remember your mother, if your mother has Hashimoto's, Hashimoto thyroiditis, she has antibodies that attack the thyroid. And these antibodies can cross the placenta, they can go to the, the fetus thyroid, and then it can go destroy the fetal thyroid tissue. And so now your fetal thyroid tissue is destroyed, and the fetus has hypothyroidism. Another problem with the fetal thyroid could it be uh, thyroid agenesis, so just a developmental defect where the thyroid doesn't doesn't develop. So that's another cause. And then the last two are going to be due to defects in thyroid hormone production and the hormone production for the fetus. So one is iodine deficiency. Remember we talked about in the thyroid hormone synthesis that iodine was key for our synthesis of thyroid hormone. So if the baby doesn't have enough iodine, it's not going to make thyroid hormone, and so they're going to have hypothyroidism. And the last one is this hormonal genetic goiter. And this is a genetic problem. It's usually a genetic problem with a, it's a genetic defect in thyroid hormone production. So you can see this hormono, so hormo it's related to the hormones, and this means it doesn't work well. So this hormonal genetic goiter, genetic defect in thyroid hormone production. So again, these two are due to damage to the thyroid itself. These two are due to problems in uh, thyroid hormone production. And how does this present? How does congenital hypothyroidism present? Uh, this just just go back to the thyroid hormone function. Remember that thyroid hormone. What what was what was important for in, in the baby? Remember it was important for maturation of the CNS, so development of the brain. And the other thing is for development of the skeleton. Remember we talked about how it works together with growth hormone to influence growth. So if you have the uh, low levels of thyroid hormone, you're gonna get impaired development of the CNS in the brain and impaired development of the skeleton. So the way this presents is you're going to have mental retardation from the brain impairment, you're going to have short stature and skeletal abnormalities, that's from the, the skeletal abnormalities, and then the other things you're going to see is you're going to see an enlarged tongue and umbilical hernia. So mental retardation, short, short stature and skeletal abnormalities, and you get enlarged tongue umbilical hernia. So just to review, you have, we have a bunch of causes of hypothyroidism. In adults, you're going to be thinking about these three right here. Um, there's, they're all going to be very similar. You're going to have that hypothyroid symptom. So the way you have to differentiate it is Hashimoto's has this painless thyroid enlargement with nothing else. Subacute granulomatous thyroiditis has, you can have transient hyperthyroid. So they're going to be hyperthyroid for a little bit, but they're going to be followed by hypothyroid symptoms. And it's going to be painful on exam. It's painful to touch. So that's a that's, uh, identifying feature. And then fibrosing thyroiditis. Fibrosing tells you everything. It's fibrosis. It's very hard to touch. It feels like a rock. Okay, and then also some diagnostic features. So Hashimoto's has the Hertel cells and germinal centers. The subacute granulomas thyroiditis, you see granulomas as you see from the name. And then finally, we have congenital hypothyroidism. Just remember, thyroid function tells you a lot. And, just, and then the other things to remember is you get enlarged tongue and an umbilical hernia.